construed manager Christianity's position. Dirt and images of plants suggest the shroud is not handmade. In 1983, Oswald Scheuermann saw images of plants on the shroud. In 1985, Dr. Alan Wanger and his fellow researcher and wife, Mary Wanger, saw them too. They also saw nails, inscriptions, and rope somehow seared into the cloth. They investigated the phenomena for 30 years. But are the images really there? We humans tend to see patterns in random markings and in shapes like clouds. This tendency is called pareidolia. This paper recounts experiments showing how religious context strongly influences the perception of inscriptions, even when none are present. Despite this, here we'll show strong converging evidence that the marks are plants and not figments. We remain noncommittal about the inscriptions and other images. Ten years into their investigations, the Wangers showed their photos to Dr. Avino Danin, a noted botanist specializing in desert plants in Judea. Danin immediately spotted images of flowers native to Jerusalem. Later, he discovered more images, some even the Wangers hadn't detected. During the next 15 years, Danin gave many lectures and wrote several papers and a book about his findings. He focused especially on these four species. Danin writes, The only place in the world where people could bring fresh parts of these four species and place them on the body of the Shroud Man was the area between Jerusalem and Hebron. March and April are the flowering months common to nine species he found on the Shroud. Hence, it is highly probable that the enshrouding took place in March-April. Many scholars agree, putting Jesus' death at April 7th, A.D. 30, or April 3rd, A.D. 33. For many reasons, Danin's findings are very likely true. First, Danin was an absolute expert in his field, the very field he brought to bear on this question. Here is a list of the many plants named after him. Second, unlike clouds in which no one could imprint a face, there are many examples of flower imprints on paper and cloth. For hundreds of years, people have pressed flowers in books. Often, images of the flowers form on the opposite page. Scheuermann demonstrated a second imprint method. He used Curleon photography, in which high-voltage electricity flows over objects like leaves. They lose electrons on their edges when they touch cloth, forming a dark line around their contours. The images are sharply defined where the leaf touched the cloth and fuzzy where it did not. These experiments convinced Danin that the shroud's plant images result from a real physical process. Third, blinding by religious fervor is unlikely, since Danin was, in his own words, a Jew and not a profound believer of any religion. Fourth, the Wangers pioneered a technique which produced these 3D-like images of berries. This fruit fits one of the species seen on the shroud. Fifth, the images are visible in photos from 1898, 1931, 1978, and negatives from 1931. They were taken with different cameras, with different optical quality, using films with different emulsions, different spectral characteristics, and developed under different darkroom conditions. Danin also saw the shroud in person, once through binoculars from 9 meters and once from mere inches. The same image sets are observed in all of these conditions. Sixth, since the 1970s, experts identified pollen collected from the shroud. Many of these are from the species seen in the images. At present, though, we can't be too dogmatic, since experts disagree on some key pollen identifications. Danin himself always maintained he was a plant expert, not a pollen expert. We also can't be dogmatic about limestone dirt found on the cloth. Christian tradition has Jesus carry his cross up a dusty trail, likely barefoot. He falls several times, unable to break his fall because of his load. Dirt on the shroud closely conforms with this tradition. The barely visible dirt is present at the feet, nose, and left knee of the shroud man. Chemist Dr. Joseph Kolbeck studied the dirt and compared it to samples from tombs in Jerusalem taken by archaeologist Dr. Eugenia Natowski. In a 1986 article in Biblical Archaeology Review, Kolbeck says, Further analysis was conducted by Dr. Ricardo Levi Setti, 
who put both Shroud and Jerusalem samples through his high-resolution scanning ion microprobe and produced graphs. These graphs revealed that the samples were an unusually close match. Former Shroud believer and current Shroud skeptic Hugh Ferry analyzed larger and clearer versions of these graphs. He wrote that certainly we can see gross similarities between limestone from each source. However, the count numbers are very different. The graphs most certainly do not reveal strikingly similar patterns. Quite the reverse. Ferry adds, Ricardo Levi-Setti was a true giant in the field of ion microscopy. It is inconceivable that he was not well aware of the differences between the two samples he was given to study. Any subsequent misunderstanding must have been due to Kolbeck and Natowski. Who is right? This paper contains a separate line of evidence and concludes, many mineral particles are compatible with the Jerusalem soil. Further, Levi said he died 30 years after the paper was published, yet I find no sign he ever called for retractions. Did he not know the article existed? Did he know it but not care? Or unlike Ferry, did this true giant in the field agree with Natowski and Kolbeck's conclusions? We don't know. Our view is that both the pollen and the limestone data are unsettled. But there are excellent reasons for holding that the plant images and nearly invisible dirt support the shroud looking real, not handmade. Next, we conclude video series two.